everybody. Welcome to day five of Apparel Textile Sourcing Virtual. I never thought I'd say that ever. Day five. Our shows are usually three days long, but it's nice to be able to, uh, to reach people on a daily basis all week long. So welcome. Um, our first seminar of the day is with um, a dear friend of the ATS brand. He's been with us since day one in our show in 2016 in Canada. His name is Mark Sidler. He is the group CMO of uh, Testex. And his talk today is titled Global Test Textile Testing and Certifications During and Post Pandemic. I'm very excited for this one. I came prepared. I have my Ecotex towel ready. So um, I won't take up any more time. We do have a chat box. So anybody who has any questions, please feel free to put them in there and we'll address them at the end of the, of the, uh, the presentation. So Mark, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Jason. It's good to be back, even only virtually, um, but uh, since the very beginning of uh, our corporation, I always like to travel to, to see our ATSC friends in Toronto, but those, of course, in China and so forth. I'm very glad that I'm part of it. I also br brought uh, Jason's best friend, uh, Texalotl. That's uh, one of our mascots, but today... Hey. Uh, <laughs> He, she, it is wearing a face mask, you know, we have to protect ourselves. This is also a bit part of my topic, of course, also for us. I mean, the whole textile industry is quite challenged. The consumers, the retailers, the brands are challenged, but certainly as well, we as a certification company do also have um, additional um, chances, opportunities, but also difficulties to execute our, for instance, our audits. So I sneaked in a little bit of title, survival versus sustainability. And um, I just downloaded before uh, today's presentation, the Muscle of Pyramid in English, because I didn't know the text. And if you go from Muscle of, I'm sure everybody knows the Muscle of Pyramid of you, of yours. So we have at the very bottom the physio physiological needs. So let's like, like water, food, air. We have the safety needs on the second level. So where does survival and sustainability, where does it end in? And I think at the very end of my presentation, I'll make a resume, but I very much believe, just to start now, sustainability, this is still it's not just a trend, it's an attitude. And also in these difficult times, especially when a lot of chances for the companies that appear, we have to take them, we have to address them. Otherwise, I be really believe we won't survive. And this is not just because of the pandemic, this is also because of our business model. So let's dive in. And I, um, uh, I just want to address quickly that Testex is very much co committed to sustainability, the company I work for, and uh, we are really looking to innovation, transparency, but also into digital and ethical processes. So it was also a chance for us. Luckily, we started with our digitalization a little bit earlier than the, the pandemic. So it was not the, the COVID-19 who made our digitalization. It was a bit early in December. We we moved all to SharePoint and Teams, so it was quite easy for us to anticipate. And I think I also want to encourage all the companies, digitalization is part also of the future of our supply chain. So to give you a quick start on the emotional side, especially about sustainability, we brought up a new video. So let's share with it with you. It's also on YouTube. Dear Fashion, I love you, but we need to talk. I love you because you make me feel special, wanted and proud of myself. So far I have enjoyed each and every moment we have spent together. Now things are changing and I find it hard to keep my faith in you. I still love you, but as our planet is facing climate change, I am facing a change of heart. Your industry is one of the most polluting in the world, and the numbers are increasing. Now don't tell me you do this because that's just what consumers want. I am a consumer and I'm telling you what I want. Firstly, I want to know that my clothes aren't doing any harm to me or the environment. And secondly, 
that the people who are making them are working in fair conditions. I fear the moment when I'll have to face my kids and tell them the details about fast fashion. Please think about it. Stand up for our planet. Make smart decisions. Join Urco Techs. So sustainability, it's still on. It's still a big topic. I think a lot of you remember uh, photos from uh, Future for Friday Kids. I just became a father three months ago. And I think uh, I might have to explain uh, a few things what happened 2019 and 2020. And uh, the very end of my today's presentation, we also talk about community mosques. How do you want to protect? Of course, made of textile. And um, so um, it's still on and it will come back and sustainability is part of our society. Of course, now we talk about security to secure ourselves. So, but now in this part, before I, as I end with the mosque, I will dive into the, the topic with what we really hardly believe this is our future for our industry. Back, of course, in 2015, uh, 193 members um, have signed uh, uh, the SDG goals. And I think still today, I'm not sure because now I think also, I'm also talking to the US. I don't know where the US is gonna end, but uh, we really take this chance that to make it understandable because I think now what we also see in this pandemic time, things need to be simple. People want to understand how things are working. Do you have to wear a mask? You don't have to wear a mask. What kind of mask is useful for you? Things need to be simple. Things need to be addressable. So on this chart, you see the 17 SDGs and Ecotex and Testex is very much focusing on the ones which are not faded. So, we, of course, uh, we have very much about number 12, resum responsible consumption and production, and then, of course, as well, climate action and so on. But I will address the SDGs during my next few slides. To give you an example, I bring up my favorite um, um, uh, my favorite result from the US. So driving from Houston to LA, I guess, especially the people who live in the US, you know, it's a long journey and you produce a certain mini emission. And this is equal, you see in the upper left, this is equal uh, with 11.4 kilogram of apparel annually. So going a little bit into Europe, so all the textile emission we produce, our industry is exactly the same like Europe does for everything, for metric gigaton. And to the right, you see the different stages of our supply chain. I brought that slide up before, but it really sees where are the hotspots, where do you want to address it? Is it now the transportation? So. On the left, we are very much about the cars. So actually transportation is an issue, but it's a very small one. Distribution goes down to 1.3%. Uh, so our biggest hotspots are the yarn preparation and the dyeing and finishing. So we have, this was the first analysis we have done on Quantis, which is a LCA um, professional worldwide. We wanted to dig in into the figures to improve our products and also to serve our clients with solutions, which even go to the very end to the final consumer. So you can ask why LCA? I mean, it depends a little bit who you're asking. Do they believe in, sci in, in science or not? But the, the agreement which was made in Paris, it was keep the global warming to two degrees. And now how you wanna measure that and how you wanna break it down into your industry. So the LCA, which is also 
on the, on the bottom right, which is based in science targets. So everyone who believes in science, uh, he will not, he will not uh, challenge that. Um, we have to break it down to the, to the, even to the end consumer that he can make a, a better decision. So I want to know what, for instance, my shirt, my dress shirt, how much CO2 has been generated to produce this. But it, was it now from India cotton farming? Was it from China? Was it from Greece? Or was it even from the US? This has a big impact, actually the water on the, and, and the CO2 on the country. So there's a lot of data out there. There's a lot of data we can accelerate together also with the data we have as Ecotex because we are auditing the companies we have, uh, we have water usage, we have CO2 emission in the factory. But for instance, what is missing for us, the example I gave you before with cotton, for instance, for my shirt, um, if the cotton comes now from Greece, um, this has a certain impact on the water or the CO2. So this data is missing. So we want to link and integrate it the metrics into the Ecotex products, so at the very end, the consumer in the shop can make a smarter decision or a more sustainable decision. So we were, there are a lot of factors you can bring the LCA data in, and we were focusing on these um, six topics. Carbon footprint, this is mo mostly the most common one. Um, use of resources, so how much land, human health, that, 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 for instance, the DALI index, which some of, pe some of the people are familiar with, water use. So for instance, uh, uh, one kilogram of cotton uses 7,500 liters in uh, water. I'm sure Jason can translate that into gallons. I think I will fail, but I think it's, it's approximately divided by four or something like that. Then of course, we have the fresh water exo exotoxicity. This is the part which goes into also into the water and so on. And in our first pilots we did uh, last year for the project, we, we have some key findings. So this is, is the first time I show this to you. Um, so we wanted to know, and this is now from a normal cotton t-shirt from a Swiss company. It's a, it's a benchmark now, so this t-shirt is from a normal Swiss company, which has a supply chain we, we have been able to look into. And this is now the result. So 2.8 kilogram of CO2 has been uh, emissioned to air from these 150 grams of fabric, which is of course, um, sewed and cut into this t-shirt. And of course, now our client, he wanted to know, is this now good or a bad value? So you see underneath, you see in, in general, so if you go into LCA data, you find a, you find a value of 5.4. So they are like half of a normal t-shirt for the CO2 emission. And you also see some other results underneath. Then we have um, the DALI index, so for the human health, um, this is a number. And you can also, of course, you can, uh, you can compare it with, um, for instance, pack of cigarette, or if you have leukemia case, what does it mean? How much is the impact for the workers which are uh, um, involved in this supply chain? As well as in the middle one, the land use and uh, the water on the very right. Also for the water, you can uh, realize here now, for instance, an Olympic size swimming pool. Olympic is not this year on, but the, the pool would need two and a half thousand cubic meter of water. I think again in gallons is about divided by four. And, and uh, at, at the t-shirt which we were comparing with was 0 0.6 cubic meter. And from this data, of course, you can, you can compare, you can improve because there you can see your, um, your challenges. For instance, there was a challenge for our client because here they are double above. So we have to dig their in and see what is, what is the, the problem that they can improve their self in the ecosystem quality. Good, so let me continue. So what we really do, Ecotex, 
I will not go through all the slides, um, but I'll try to give you a good overview. So we are not, most of us know us as Ecotech Standard 100. See, this is on the very bottom right. But actually we already start where, where everything starts in our supply chain. So we start with either with the raw materials, for, for example, from the chemistry. So with Ecopospert on the very left. So this is the input uh, management. But we also verify the, in an audit the manufacturing process or so the process control, but also not only what is done in the factory itself, also what is going into the air. Before I gave you the result, uh, the, the meaning of CO2 emissioning, but also into the rivers, we have a product uh, called Detox to Zero. There we very much verify what is the involvement into water. And output control out of the factory. I started with standard 100, uh, which is a product uh, from Mercotex since uh, more than 25 years. And, but we have also further developed, and I will also give you a li live demonstration uh, with Made in Green, which is not only tested for harmful substance, it also has very much control with STEP, where we also check environmental and social aspects. Quickly, Ecotex. Ecotex is, uh, uh, is an association of 18 different institutes. I'm re representing the official one from Switzerland. We have uh, several offices around the globe, also the one in Canada. Uh, that's how everything has started. And uh, at the moment, there are a bit more than 70 um, Ecotex offices around the globe. So we are wherever the industry is, but not only the manufacturing industry, also of course brands, retailers, also NGOs and so on. So it's, it's very important to be close. We work with more than 14,000 clients and several thousand certificates have issued since the beginning. The institute I work for, I'm based in Zurich. This is our headquarter. We have started next year, we have the 175 years of Jubilee. We have started with silk. Actually, Seitentrocklungsanstalt Zürich means silk conditioning. So when you actually heat and dry the silk, that you have a, always the same weight because silk has a lot of water inside. This is also a good connection to our friends at CCCT because actually Zurich was always on the other side of the silk road from China back to Zurich. And in the 1993, we also joined the Ecotex Association and we also merged another Ecotex Institute, actually which was a founding member, OTI, is the Austrian Institute, into Testex. Lately, uh, two years ago, we also joined the CDHC, which is um, uh, quite a familiar organization that some of you might know. This is quickly our, um, uh, our history how we grew. So you see along the supply chain, we started very much 1995 in Hong Kong and, and now really moved into several other country, African countries, also Euro East European countries, but also South European countries. So wherever uh, the textile industry is, you will also find Testex. To give you some numbers, uh, what Ecotex is, you saw before the portfolio of the different products. Um, I start on a, with a, a newer product of us. It's the ladder standard on the very left. There are now 46 uh, certificates. In, in, of course, in comparison to standard 100, where are almost 19,000 certificates, valid ones. This is important. This number is related to the, the valid ones by end of last calendar year. And for the chemicals, which is the second from the left, there are about 460 certified eco-passport chemicals, which also have, of course, an impact into the supply chain. And our latest product, which of course, I will also come a little bit later to with Made in Green, which I also do a, a live demonstration because it's good to see how everything is traceable. And I brought one product with me. It's a beautiful hand plan blanket. And here you can also see, um, this is the Made in Green label, and from these labels, there are now more than 1,000 uh, on the market. Good, so let me continue, and of course, you can also see the growth rate. 
So some of the retailers and brands which are trusting on, on a certain level into Equifax, I always make an example with Adidas because I think no one saw an Adidas product labeled uh, with Equifax standard 100, but they use as a system, they use Equifax in the, in the supply chain uh, to ensure their product safety and their product quality. And so if, if a supplier has the standard 100 certificate and wants to supply to Adidas, he can, he can skip a lot of the tests which are otherwise needed. And other familiar brands, I'm sure you, you are aware of. Of course, also for us, um, there are a lot of copycats and we are also increasing our legal departments uh, at Ecotex. Actually, Ecotex is just one floor below my office. They are in the same building. Uh, so Ecotex is also based in Zurich, in Switzerland. And uh, we have, of course, in, on several retailers, uh, we have also fake labels and we have to address them because it's also a commitment, um, the verification of uh, of a certification. On the other side, what are we doing or what, where do we jump in as Ecotex? We are lowering actually the, the risk. We make sure that the initiatives or the legislations on the markets are in comparison with the Ecotex, for instance, standard 100. So of course on the upper right, Greenpeace, I think I don't need to explain to anyone who Greenpeace is and the detox campaign. So it's very, um, this is a, it's not a partner, this is a stakeholder of, of Ecotex. We are independent. So we ensure whatever we launch on the, on the market. So every year we are reviewing our limit values. We have to ensure that they comply with, of course, with the legal aspects of the different uh, countries, but also, of course, with the NGOs, because the, the NGOs also gives drive and, and and I think the, the challenges into the retailers and brands. So we also became a member of the CDHC Association as before to ensure that the big players have one also a source. A little bit on the downer part, the leather industry, because actually we, we always tried um, to certify also leather parts, for instance, on a jeans and a denim product. Uh, on the, the backside, for instance, the label. And uh, this was quite challenging. So that time we also said we have to address it, especially because there are a lot of combined products uh, that we have to address the leather parts because there are different um, uh, elements which are critical in the chemistry. Uh, I'm sure some of you still remember Erin Brockovich with Julia Roberts. This was all about also the leather industry. Good. So why we do that? Uh, what is Ecotech standing for? So we really want to enable the consumer and the company to, to make responsible decision and protect the, our planet. So the video I showed you in the beginning or what I said that sustainability is still now on. This is really our mission because we believe that the companies and this is also from recent researchers, the companies which really invest into this area they're still now ahead. One part, so some of you, they all know the standard 100 where we talk about the consumer protection, actually we talk about tested for harmful substance. This, but this is not enough because we also want to protect the people who are working in the supply chain, but also we want to uh, ensure that the, pay, the planet Actually, I hope it even will get better one day because it doesn't look, science doesn't say that uh, the, the maximum of two degrees, which is the limit, that we can achieve that. So we, even we need to become stricter to um, address the global warming challenge. And uh, with STEP, so we look into six different areas. Um, I start on the top, environmental performance, health safety, social responsibility, environmental management, quality management. This is a, um, um, uh, one of the areas we talk, of course, about ISO 9001, but I will give you examples for everyone. And then chemical management. But let's have a look into the system. But before, I just quickly did a comparison because a lot of people 
always I like to be on the stage and then people will ask me, so is it now step or is it Ecotex or is it blue sign or gods or there are a lot of different standards and uh, we don't like to um, make comments about competitor products. Uh, so I prefer sustainabilitymap.org. This is um, a joint um, project from the United Nations and IT, ITC. They do this comparison. So we also have to sign ourselves up and we need to send them all the documentation and they will benchmark the different system which exist on the market. So you can also click on the link because I certainly will also provide uh, the, the PowerPoint as a PDF and there actually you can benchmark all kinds of system which are in the market and which are also uh, loaded up to that platform. You can benchmark and now you can see with step. Step is quite challenging because it addresses all five areas of the ITC. We have six, but here now they brought them down to five. So it's quite a challenging um, system. So let's have a look into the system. Um, we are step is not only for, um, of course, for for the making up, for instance, but it's also for the direct and wet spinning. So along the whole supply chain for fabrics, for leave and for logistics. So so step is really making bringing transparency into the whole production process process of our industry. It's not only for textile, now also since this year, it's also for leather. So indeed, uh, quickly just uh, dive in into the six modules, chemical management, um, the promotion of green chemistry, of course, this input manage is certainly very important, but it's also important to prevent so the people who are working with the chemicals, they are educated the right way. We need to ensure, of course, the MRR cell, the compliance, uh, the compliance with the limit values. This is also monitored every year and it's also uh, published on our website, also on Ecotex, what goes into MRR cell. Environmental performance, if you talk about CO2 emission, global warming potential, of course, this is an important uh, area to cover. And um, also waste management, for instance. And at the end, the plan is to, of course, reduce the carbon footprint and with newer technologies, of course, you, every company, textile company can improve themselves. We, we will measure that and we will also report it in our reports. It's of course based on the local legislation that uh, certain companies will measure it and we will look into the reports and it will be part of the step certification. So also if we go into a factory, uh, for instance, let's say in this year, 2020, uh, we will uh, do uh, intermediate audits and then you can also see the change. Are you, are you actually moving in the right direction? You can even show it towards other brands. Environmental management, ISO 14001 and other standards. This is really about setting the targets. And of course, always it's about continuous improvement. And there are a lot of factors, which I will show you a bit later. The quality management, I think most of the companies have started that uh, with that element uh, many, many years ago. Of course, we, otherwise we would have never delivered good products into the into the stores and brand shops. So um, also here, if you have ISO 9001, you already cover quite a lot, but it's, it doesn't need to be ISO 9001, can it be also a known system, but there it's very much how you control and ensure quality towards a downstream of your supply chain. Health and safety, I'm sure you also heard maybe rap um, this is also a very a similar area where we cover, of course, um, health and safety at the workplace with emergency equipment, with fa facility safety and so on. Another one, social responsibility, this is of course also a wrap topic and it was BSCI and SA 1000. So if a company already has this area covered, this will also reflect into the reporting. So this is less checking on site. So if, whenever a report exists, our auditors, Ecotex only has their own auditing system. We don't work with third parties. So they're all trained and controlled 
from Ecotext and actually their institutes. So we don't say, send auditors from other third party labs, for instance. Um, of course, they have to comply with the ILO and so on. So fair wages, of course, this is the tough topic. And especially also now what we see during the pandemic. So how are the workers protected with the wages? And I think a lot of us, I believe, I've seen the photos maybe from India and Bangladesh that a lot of these um, employees have lost a job. They don't know how to survive. So it's about survival, how they're going to survive, how they're going to feed, feed their family. I think of all of us have a certain responsibility uh, through that whole supply chain. So the certification quickly to understand how to do. So it's a, actually it's an online assessment also here with standard 100, we are not yet that far, but with STEP, we did it uh, six, six years ago. So it always the start was an online application. So it was already a digital process. It's actually online evaluation. So the companies which have to fill in the six question in this, um, sorry, the six modules with a lot of questions uh, will see also their scoring right away. They can see how, can they pass actually a certification and on, on the search step. So the auditors will analyze the results and only if the results could lead to a certification, the auditor will show up on site and he will, he will check if, if actually the data which you feed it into the system is really valid and accurate. And there will be a, um, an evaluation and a report. And at the end, uh, the result could be a certificate with also a final report. And then if you look quite closely, you can see there are again these six, six modules which are covered. And at the end, you can also see in what area, how good you're in. So this is also, was always the idea of STEP that you can improve yourself year by year because no company has the money to address all the issues which our auditors will report. Here also quickly, so there are basic questions, there are the upper ones on the, on the iPad on the, back, on the back, there are the basic questions which you have to achieve to, to, um, to fulfill the criteria. If you're a little bit more advanced, you can also get additional scoring, uh, which will end up at the end in certification. Um, STEP has 37 questions, this for, was from last year. I didn't do the update yet, but it's already published on our website. And, and of course, if you have a certain uh, certification, for instance, from RAP, uh, this will be also that 16% of the questions uh, are, already, are already covered, and this will be taken into consideration. It will also have an effect on actually on the costs. Uh, again, also here, if we don't look into the other system, but we look actually into the um, different processes, for instance, the making up of the products. So there are actually 297 questions which are making up, uh, making sew and cut, I think it's called in the US, sew and cut in the US. Um, so there are 297 questions in the step, um, in the step audit, in the step questionnaire, and about 60 questions all well already covered, for instance, in the BSCI or Fairware Foundation report and 20 on the other side. Huh? So we want to ensure that actually if companies have uh, already a system, they want, uh, they don't need to double work, uh, to, don't have to double work that part. And this is, so this was actually textile production, excuse myself, and this is now of course leather, as you can see on the photo. Also there it was of course the idea that also along the whole sub supply chain, of the leather industry, um, we can also make sure that double work can be eliminated as much as possible. Scoring system quickly from minimum requirements to excellent, uh, there are three levels. And also these three levels will also end up in different uh, audit and re-audit uh, phases. Um, for instance, uh, I could show you if you achieve the basic question, so you need to do all the basic questions. All the exclusion criteria need to, of course, need to be avoided, uh, or actually they fail. If you have an exclusion criteria, you fail certainly. And 
minimum requirements, then you're on 0% for, for the whole scoring. If you are above the 34%, which is actually the level one, um, on the level one to level two, then you're above 34%, and same for level two to level three, 67%, just mathematic shared. And this has, of course, an impact. So the companies want to achieve a good certification at the very beginning because this will reduce their costs for re-audit and unannounced audit. So if a company is on level one, they will also have within the period of three years, they will have two unannounced audits and actually one conformity audit. So conformity audit for every level is the same, but only on the level one, uh, two unannounced audits. On level two, one unannounced audit on action level three, what some of the, I call them the green uh, lighthouses are the companies which invest in sustainability. Uh, they only have a conformity audit um, in the middle of the three years period. So quickly the reporting. So these are some print screens out of the report, of course. Um, if you're, let's say you're now a brand or you're your retailer, uh, you can um, you can have a look into the distribution of the six modules and you can also benchmark. I could hopefully, if I'm invited back to Canada or to another event, I can also make once a live demo or at our booth or actually Stella, which is our lovely um, uh, representative in Canada and Vancouver. She can also give you once a live demo in the MyEcoTex tool because there, for instance, as a brand, you can benchmark all your companies. You actually, you will add them to your supply chain and then you could see the scoring of these six modules of all the factories and you can actually even benchmark them to the whole step community. So to see how good you are, for instance, in, in comparison with the different making up companies. So you can also address there your weak spots and improve yourself. And here again, this is just an example. Um, on the facility, on the overall facility score. So this company ended up in the level two, so mathematically level two. And, but the difference that the six modules, uh, they, they look differently. For instance, chemicals, they're on level one and safety are they're on level three. At the end, it goes into level two. So this is, uh, this is actually just a little bit um, the, the deeper dive into the different modules. And also here you have, a, quick example um, for the scoring. Um, I don't know if you can really read it. It depends if you're now watching us from a mobile phone or from a computer, I guess. So for instance, uh, for the general questions there, you can see that you can achieve a maximum score of 1,211. And the company did 99, 993. So they achieved a 58% uh, uh, a rate rating and they ended up in level two to pause. So this is now the basic and you need to have 687 uh, score points. This one I will jump and at the end, uh, I'll show you a little bit before on a picture, um, at the end of the step application process, you will, you will, uh, you will get the uh, certificate. The page on, on the back of the certificate is actually that that you have passed this, that you have passed um, at the step certification. The first page on the front will also show you how good you have passed in different modules. So now it depends on you, if you're a brand or you're a factory, do you want to show it to your customers or not? Um, this is up to your um, decision. But of course, the certification which said you have passed, uh, this is mandatory. And now um, step, and why I bring it uh, now made in green and other products in because with standard 100 or now the, with the leather standard, because this is now also part of the step and the Ecotex family, you can achieve the made in green. And, and a little bit later, I'll also show you why made in green. We believe that uh, my daughter's generation, uh, the, the future for Friday generation, 
uh, is now really asking for the sustainability because product safety, as I said, for Ecotech Standard 100 might be good for some of the companies, but for a lot, it's not good anymore because you're only addressing some of the areas. And to start with, I just uh, also put here a video link. I will not show, show you the video, how it's done. It's also new, it's on, on, on YouTube now because the verification of a certificate, because as I said, there are a lot of copycats in the market and we want to ensure that, that you have a way to um, check if a certificate is valid or not. So I'll quickly jump to the website of Ecotex. Hopefully this is still online. And this is mostly more, the more nervous part if I'm on a computer, uh, sorry, on stage, because sometimes here I just miss, uh, make some mistakes while typing. So I just brought, actually, this is a bikini. Jason already knows that bikini from traveling around the world. Uh, you can type a number, which is on a certificate or actually is, is labeled on a product. You can put it in here and you put, press the button and you will see this will go back into the, uh, the database of Ecotex and will show is the certificate valid or not. So it, it is valid. What product does it stand for? Is it, is it standard 100 or is it, uh, is it another product? It could be also chemical, chemical component. What product class it is. If you have questions about product class, please also address them to Stella. I'm not covering that part here now. And as well, this is the bit, the trickiest part. What 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 is the article which is certified how is it how is it how is it composed and how is what are the comp components which the certificate certification is covering this is also a bit the tricky part also there i invite you to uh, address this to stella so this was one part was for the for the um, excuse me for the i oh, need to get my next slide one second <laughs> So now this is made in green. And here I also do a live demo. So this is the certification number I have. Um, uh, quickly jump into, so this you need to uh, consider this is now on a product because it's now not only tested for harmful substances, it's also, this is the step part. Number two, made in environmentally friendly facilities and the product is produced in safe and socially responsible workplaces. This number, uh, you can easy, easy, either use now your mobile phone and scan it, so you can do the same like I'm gonna show you now live, or I'll just go again um, to our website and hopefully I still can see the number. So I have chosen for one of our clients a number. Hopefully it works, I think it's a zero. This is uh, from a company called uh, Kalida. Um, they are a, a brand for pajamas and loungewear and so on. So here you can see again, the product is traceable. Take a look. So you, you know it's about made in green. You even see the product. Um, you can even see here a little bit some additional information, maybe a product number or what uh, materials are enclosed in. Is it, who is the label owner? Here it's the brand now, also here with the icons. And then I think this is really the cool part, uh, which we're, we're working on hardly to also improve uh, yeah, year by year. Um, you want to see the supply chain. This really gives us uh, transparency. For instance, where has it been so soon? So and cut, where's the brand? And of course, also where's uh, the dyeing and finishing. And you can try that with several products. There are also some demo products on to verify. So this is a little bit the part of Made in Green. I really believe if it goes into sustainability, Made in Green is one of the good options. So what we are working on, remember my first few slides, I was talking about LCA. So one of the bigger goals of the Ecotex Association is to bring in this LCA technology with it on the level of a pilot also into a bigger, um, and in a bigger, uh, um, in a, a bigger and a wider approach that we can really integrate it into um, all of our product. That at the end, you can also say, okay, so much water has been used, product A, the other one has a different approach or CO2 emission and so on. 
Now, I was only talking about survive as sustainability. Now, a little bit about surviving. You remember I brought a Texalotl in. She's wearing, a, she eats, is wearing a face mask. Actually, this is now a medical one. And if it comes to sustainability, we also believe there, there is some potential. Uh, I'm now just talking globally. And we have recently launched also with the support of the government in Switzerland and also with MPOM, which is a famous R&D research institute. We have launched a new um, label. It's called um, the Testex Community Label. There we really address the apparently today needs of protection of surviving. Uh, just different masks, I uh, show them here. So we have, of course, the respiratory masks, the FFP, I think in the US, they're called N95. They are from the PPE, so protective, from the protective area, personal protective equipment, actually, PPE means, stands for. We have in the middle, the medical face mask, which go into a EN norm. And then we have the third category, maybe there's also a fourth and the fifth one, I'm not aware of. We have the community mask and the community mask, how the word already says, this is actually for people in their daily life. I'm not making any um, comments today, is it safer or less safe than the other products? I'm only explaining you the possibility and the advantages of a certified and tested community mask. So what is the community mask test tax has introduced? It's not FFP and it's not surgical. This is very important, important uh, to make the statement again. We look on the first level, we look about splash resistance, particle filtration, and also per air permeability. On the second level, because it's made of, of textile, of course, you also want to reuse it because it's not a one-way product one use product, you can also wash it. We have defined the minimum level of five cycles. So you can wash, uh, you can wash it five times. And you'll, we also recommend, or actually it's a must for the product testing, uh, that it's washed at six degrees and plus, because this will also reduce um, the, um, of course, the COVID-19 challenge with the virus. And of course, the comfort is also one of the area uh, which we have to cover. And there are several tests we, we are doing there to ensure that you're happy with the mask for not just one time use. And uh, there is also the connection to Ecotex now. Um, the harmful substances, of course, this is also part of, 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 of a face mask because you, you wear that on your, on your face day long or maybe while you're commuting using uh, the metro or using trains, using airplanes, you, you are actually um, sweating a lot um, in summer times, but you also get uh, a lot of um, uh, liquid. And so we need to ensure actually also that uh, we, we check for several other factors, for instance, for color fastness, because, you know, they're going to be maybe some stylish ones in pink with Swarovski stones on, so you want to ensure that you can really uh, wash it as well. You have uh, fastness to saliva, uh, because actually that's what, what really happens if you wear it all day long. And also for, in some, for, for example, dimensional change. So you want to ensure if you wash it, that it will not shrink down to, to below the protection which is needed to uh, uh, help or actually give you a certain uh, level of security. Um, we have the fact sheet on our website, which is now available in English. Uh, our website will be built next week also. It's now only German, but the fact sheet is already English on, and next week we will also um, be able to serve you in other uh, languages. The other part, of course, is the mask design. Um, this whole setup, was done, as I said, by EMPA, which is a well-known research, um, uh, research um, institute in Switzerland. They also formed the so-called Swiss National COVID-19 Science Task Force, where also our government was involved. 
And so all the recommendations, so the source, if you Google that, you will find there's a recommendation paper. We also have it on our website, which also gave us actually the indication what is the standard for this uh, community mosque. So it's also the mosque design, of course, because there in French, there is a norm called Afnor, what, what the size and how much you have to cover. And something also we brought up because again, we want to be traceable people are not just only trusting words, they also want to ensure that what they buy, what they, maybe they have to, to uh, buy at a higher level, they want to trace it and ensure if it's really true what, for instance, the label is saying. So our goal is really that the, the, the labels, uh, our brands and customers and also the factories uh, want to attach to the product you can trace them by a number and you will see if this label, this standard is really valid or not. Good, so many thanks. I think we go now also to the question part. Um, here are some of our um, social media links. Please, uh, on the right, we have the Chinese, the WeChat, and on the, on the left one, we have uh, the European American ones, the LinkedIn and Twitter, I mean, they're both American companies, sorry to make that statement. Uh, even now they're very hard in the press, especially Twitter is. Uh, good luck to them. And um, here is my most important person. This is Stella. She is our uh, lady in Canada. And uh, so all the detail question you have, please also address it to her. She will be very happy to serve you. And she's also more in your time zone because now for me, it's Friday evening, just a little bit before, before six. So Jason, jump in with some questions. That's me. And actually this is my favorite new picture because this is from stage and this is what's provided by, by you guys. Thank you very much for that one. And this is one of my favorite quotes. So I really believe the sustainability. So of course it's about surviving as well, but I really believe if we don't uh, focus on sustainability, um, all the old investment we do now in just protecting ourselves will also harm our future. So keep on the sustainability groove. Jason. Mark. Yes. All right, we got a few questions here. First of all, you look great as a sketch. Just want to let you know, I like, I like, there you go. Look at that. All right, um, first question, let's see. Can you please give a suggestion? Is there any echo solution for anti-stain finishing that can be applied to cotton fabric? Anti-stain. So I uh, would, can I see that question in the, in the chat box? Yeah, it's in the chat box at the bottom. Okay, let me quickly see because I, don't, I want, uh, is actually Stella also in because then maybe she could uh, explain anti-stain because let me quickly, I just want to make sure that I don't make a translation mistake. Anti-stain. Anti -stain. I guess it's uh, something to keep the stain, uh, stain repellent finish. There's a chemical finish that's... Uh... I mean, you know, I, th I think maybe that's one question we also follow up with our chemistry because I don't want to answer that question the wrong way. Of course, uh, all our fabrics we are certifying, they are a lot of uh, exposed to chemistry. Also, of course, to water repellent, to actually even active ca chemical substance and so on. So there's a lot covered in this air to ensure that the, that the product can still pass. And uh, I think, I think uh, let me follow up that question a little bit later with our team to give you a really uh, accurate uh, answer to that one. But anti-stain should be no problem at all. Anti-stain. Yeah, Vera, if you want to, um, were you able to get Stella's? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Actually, here. I got Vera's Oops. information here, so. so. Here we go. This and is then, Stella. yeah, this is probably an easier uh, way to just contact Stella. Yes. And she'll be able to answer that question for you, Vera. Yes. You want to take a screenshot here? With that, I don't see the answers yet. How can I get XX? Okay. All right, so uh, we have one in the chat, in the Q&A box. How can I get access to Ecotex certified masks, okay. certified mask manufacturers? This is, uh, is this related to um, 
uh, what kind of mask? Is it the, the community mask? Is it the surgical mask? Or is it, it doesn't matter. Because what I can do, I quickly show you this. I didn't do this. I normally do just online. Um, I didn't show you the buying guide. Actually, on ecotex.com, on the English side, there's a so-called buying guide. And in, in this, there's a full text search. So let me see. I didn't test that before. Uh, face mask. So let me see what happens. Okay, so there is no result. Maybe I used the wrong, uh, wrong wording, but I'm aware of. I will just use location material. Um, uh, I'll use the word mask. Oh, there we go. With mask, at least in Portugal, there's one company, but I'm I'm well aware of, and I'll think, I think also Stella here could help you to find certified Ecotex mask. And I know there are several from. Also, we have one. Um, corporate gifts, which are actually face masks. Uh, we brought in last autumn and we didn't know that the pandemia is coming. Otherwise we would have purchased much more, many more. So um, also some Korean companies, Chinese companies, there are several mask suppliers which have standard 100 already now. Yeah, so I did get an answer for that. It was uh, for community masks. Yes, it was for the community masks. So the community mask is a new product. So it was a little bit an invention from, from actually the Swiss government in accordance with r and And actually we are, I'm not allowed to tell you now the names, but we are at the moment uh, starting testing these kind of community masks, the test test, test masks. And whenever they are ready, I'm very happy to share with you the names because they will also be on the website. So this is just undergoing. Okay. I think that's all the questions we have. Does anybody else have any questions for Mark or Stella who's, who's able to, to comment now? Let's see. For smaller companies that work with mills, with Ecotex labels, can we use this info in any way being able to pay, being unable to pay fees yet? Uh, uh, explain again, Jason. So for smaller companies that work yes. with mills with Ecotex yes. labels, can we use this info in any way being unable to pay fees yet? Yeah, I think this is one of the advantages of Ecotex. Ecotex is a system which is open to everyone. So let's say if you're a brand or if you're a smaller company and you want to purchase your product based on pre-certification, you can, I'm making now an example here with something, let's say, for instance, you look for, um, excuse me, you use, you look for fabrics, standard 100, and you want to say it's knitted, and for instance, I just use unisex material, I use cotton, and now maybe, okay, let's try. And we try with North America, so there is actually a filter. Now there's Kendor, one of the clients of Stella. I'm sure he's happy now to see his name. Uh, uh, he's also one of your clients, I think, if I remember from the fair. So yeah. uh, actually this is a way to find um, pre-certified materials from companies which have a certification. Here you can even find the name and the contact address. So that means because Ecotex, I didn't cover this Ecotex standard 100 because I was covering more the sustainability side for Ecotex standard 100, which is focusing on this harmful substance. You can put together these different elements, components of a product, and then you can actually save the cost. Then you only pay for the certificate for the final product, but then there is no testing needed anymore. Because if all, so a smaller company can say, I look for pre-certified materials because this avoids me paying a lot for testing. And I'm sure also this is a good one for Stella to follow up. Yes, Stella is here. Yeah. She's here. Hello, Stella. Hi, Stella. Hi, Jason. Um, so I suppose, were you gonna follow up on that? on what Mark was talking about just now. Yeah, uh, well, so send me the um, question and the, the uh, email or phone number so I can follow up. 
Okay, so we have it right here. It's PR at wear me fashion dot fashion. I'll send it to you personally. And that is for Barra. Okay, do we have any more questions? Let's see. How about cotton knitted cloth masks, cloth mask testing and its implications in the US market? Knitted cloth mask testing and its implications on the US market. In I mean, this is an excellent question, and I think this will be a very hard one for me to answer. Um, there is, of course, I mean, um, to address this correctly, um, the recommendation we have uh, that it's recommended from the Swiss National COVID-19 Task Force, this is very much addressed to Switzerland. Uh, from my research I have done recently, they, in, in terms of textile community malls, there's not a lot out there which has a certain level of standard. Um, we, we got asked actually also by the Swiss norm uh, association, which also brings the norm one level higher, actually the standardization um, to the European level, how the Americans, if they have set yet a certain level of security, safety, comfort, washability, I'm not aware yet of, but I'm, I'm sure also Stella can dig into that and see uh, what direction America is going. But I also want to make one comment. I mean, even if you're wearing a t-shirt in front of your mouse, this has a certain protection. This doesn't mean there is no protection, but the protection, for instance, if you look into the uh, filtration, this one, particle filtration, it has about, this is what I heard from the, from the, uh, from the RNT, it has about an efficiency of about 10 to 15 percent a simple t-shirt uh, our standard is set to 70 percent if you compare it now with the ffp mask so this um the upper right one ffp mask which is used in um, professional uh, protective equipment they even go up to 98 but then of course the comfort is not anymore so good so it's always um, you need to decide what is the usage for this mask but also there we ask the government if they can make statements. So if we look about the three masks, I'm not making a comment which one is the, for the right use. I believe I have an answer, but this, this is the government. This is the health government which should make this, this statement. It's not a private company uh, which is uh, dedicated to testing and certification. Okay, I have one more question here. Do you have to name the mills you work with? Do you have to name the mills? I mean, uh, um, yes. So is this the same question asked before from the same company? Uh, different, different. Uh, different company. So I can answer uh, in different ways. I mean, uh, on one side, of course, if you want, for instance, you are now a small company and you want to use, you have your own certificate, you want to have your own little ecotex where's the camera it's here you want to have your own little ecotex certificate you have to give the names to um, to us to stella that she can prepare all the certificates which are covering the the umbrella certificate but we will not disclose them of course to the to the to public if we go now into made in green and maybe this is where the question is coming from if you go into made in green so let me quickly do that again, um, KN8GFF3, this is another, um, so for instance, um, this is a question I get quite often asked, we have certain levels of transparency, I just, oops, excuse me, I just dive here a little bit, zoom in, and now it depends, so we have a minimum uh, recommendation, or actually we have a minimum standard, I must say. You, of course, you have to show the company you are labeling the product with. So Kalida is the, is, is the owner. 
And in here, for example, the dyeing and finishing here, you can even see what the company is which did the dyeing and finishing, it's Schellenberg. But let, let me look here. Here, there's Sue and Cut. This one they show. This one, for instance, they don't show. So the minimum, rec uh, the minimum level is you have to show the country and what product level, what production level it is. You don't need to show the factory name. But you can, because this is also some kind of direction of transparency. OK? OK. Uh, I think that's all the questions we have. Do we have any other questions for Mark and Stella? I believe so. OK. Well, um, we do have their contact information, and um, if anybody has any more questions or is unable, unable to find that, if you go to the ATS website, um, go to the Seminars tab, we have a profile for Mark and TestX. You'll be able to access all of their stuff there as well. Um, if anybody wants to take a screenshot, again, really quick, uh, if they wanted to inquire about anything with textile testing, manufacturing, and uh, sourcing. Uh, thanks again, Mark. So good to see you. Unfortunately, not in person this time. Yes, but, uh, soon. I'll, I'll, hopefully we'll see you in uh, November in, uh, in Canada. So, uh, Stella, it's good to see you as well. Yeah, good to hear awesome. from you. And uh, thank you to all of our attendees for uh, your time. Thank you very much for participating Thanks. and have a great afternoon or great morning. Great morning. I'll yeah. have now my <laughs> evening. All right. Good. Have a good evening, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.